share with you a word this morning entitled Super, God's Supernatural Supply. God's Supernatural Supply. And the first thing I want you to note is that circumstances do not determine what you can do today. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 4. We're going to read verses 1 through 7. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elijah, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elijah replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elijah said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. As we look at this lady... And the circumstances that faced her. We look at her future circumstances. And as we look at the past and the present and the future, we see that the circumstances she was in were very bleak. There was no hope within her circumstances. Her past experience was her husband, who had appeared to be (laughs) God-fearing, but didn't fear God enough to make sure his wife was okay when he would die. And he died and left a family in full of debt. They were in debt. So much debt that the debt collectors came and said, we're going to take away your sons (laughs) and we're going to put them in prison until that debt can be paid. Her past circumstance, when she came to the man of God, already the past had transpired. And the past circumstances looked like God had let her down. The past circumstance looked like God had let her sons down. The past circumstance looked like everything was hopeless. As she approached Elisha, the past circumstances were not very encouraging. And as she stood before Elijah, her present circumstances that she was in right then were just as bad. She was in debt. Her sons were going to be taken to be prison, to be put in prison. And of course, if she was ever going to pay the debt, it could only be through her sons. So her sons being put in prison aren't going to help her to pay the debt which would mean it might be a forever situation. And all she had in her house was a pot of oil, a bottle of oil, one container of oil. That's all that she had. No doubt she had sold every last thing she had. If you're a mother and your children are about to be put in prison unless you pay a debt, right? You would have sold every last thing that you had in that house to ensure that your sons were not going to be sold. So her past circumstance was bad. Her present circumstance was bad. And now let's look at her future circumstances. Her son's in prison. She has no source of income. Her son's in prison. She has no family to support her. There is no future. As this lady is looking and trying to decide and make a decision for life, the circumstances she was in would not enable her to do what God wanted her to do. Today, 
You may be feeling like that widow woman. You may have past circumstances or you may have present circumstances or your future does not look good at all. And you are saying, I cannot do any more than this. This is the maximum or I can't even do anything because you're looking at your circumstance. But as we read this story this morning, the second thing I want you to know, even as your circumstances do not determine what you can do, I want to say to you, God determines today what you can do. It is not your circumstance that will make that determination. It is God that will determine today what you can do. God determines what you can do. As you take that card, as you look at it, I hope you're really hearing me and catching this this morning. As you make a decision as to what you're going to write down, that decision cannot be made by your circumstances. Because beyond your circumstances, God steps into the picture and God says, if you're going to please me, you have to live by faith. If you're going to please me, you have to walk by faith. If you're going to please me, you have to make your decisions by faith. But what does that mean? The Bible says faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. God will speak to us and tell us what we can do. God wants to determine what you can do. You see, the Bible tells us as we look through his word that God is the God of tomorrow. Even as this woman's circumstances for the future look bleak, that's not what her decision was going to depend on. Her decision was going to depend on what God could do. And God is the God of tomorrow. God is the God of the supernatural. God can change circumstances. And the end of the story tells us that the oil kept flowing and flowing and flowing from one container, from one bottle. It poured into pot after pot after pot and did not stop until there were no more containers. Because that's what God had determined. Hallelujah. And so every time I sit down and look at a faith pledge card and, and I'm going to fill that out. I don't decide by the circumstances I am in. I decide by what God tells me to do. Because he knows what is going to be possible. He knows what he is going to supply. He knows what he's going to supernaturally perform. So in that first time as I was looking at that card. My circumstances told me. I might have at the most a dollar or two. If I looked at how I spent my money through the month. And what I would expect to have possibly left because I was not a saver I was a spender but I felt I heard God speak to me and God said write down five dollars I only had four dollars and eighty cents in a month if I didn't spend one cent the whole month which is very unrealistic for a child would you agree but I heard God say five dollars so I wrote down the $5 and prayed and asked God to supernaturally supply. And somehow I got that extra 20 cents every month. And somehow I still had some money to buy sweets and other things. And I paid my pledge every month. The next time when it came time to renew the pledge, my father told everyone to pray and let God speak to them. And as I prayed, I heard God speak to me and say, write down $10. Now, my circumstances told me I only had $4.80. Are you hearing me? And as I looked at the future, the next few months, I would only have $4.80. So if I made my decision by my circumstances... I would only write down 480 or at the most repeat $5. Are you hearing me? 
But I'm telling you this morning, as we look at this story, what I hear God telling us is that He determines what we can do, not our circumstances. And God said, make it for $10. So I obeyed God, and I wrote $10 and put the card in, and the next few days when I says, God, where am I going to get the extra money? I felt God give me an idea. In those days, we lived in the back of the church many years ago when things were not modern in Singapore. And we didn't have any toilets in the church or in our, the back rooms where we lived. You had to walk outside to a row of toilets that were in the back of the yard. There was no water going to these toilets. There was no modern sanitation system. It's what we call the bucket system, which probably you had in Sri Lanka back then in those days too in some places. And so what you would do is you would go to the toilet, walk in the door, and you would walk up these steps and then sit on the throne. Do you understand what I mean? And as you would squat there, there was a hole and Underneath, as you look through the hole, was a rubber bucket where everything went in. And once a day, there'd be a man come with a bamboo pole with a huge aluminum canister on the back and the front. And he would come by, pull the buckets out, empty them, and take that big canister somewhere. And you would start the new day again. Well, needless to say, it was a very smelly system, right? It stunk Things would be messy. My wife always says men are very messy in the toilet. And in that kind of a toilet, it's probably worse. And then there were maggots. It was a mess. So the idea God gave me was I went to my mother and I said, Mom, you know how smelly those toilets are? Two toilets. Yes. I said, well, you know what? Every day when I come back from school... I will go in there underneath and carry that bucket out. And then I'll take the hose and rinse the whole place out, pour them around, take the scrub brush, scrub it all out, rinse it all out, and then carry the bucket and put it back in so the toilet will be clean. If you will give me $5 a month. Well, she said, that's a deal. She was wondering why she had never thought of that herself. And so I began doing that every day. And I got another $5 and I paid my pledge. The next time we came to renew the pledge, my circumstances told me that I would only have, if I continue doing what I've been doing, $10 a month maximum, right? $480 plus $5, which was $980, added a little more faith beyond that and I had my $10. My circumstances said that's all I had. But as I prayed and said, God, what do you want me to do? God said, increase your pledge to $20. But I don't have $20. My circumstances, God, tell me at the most I can continue it at 10 But I'm telling you today, my friend, your circumstances don't decide what you can do. It's God who determines what you can do. God can change the circumstances. Amen? God can cause the oil to keep flowing. God can cause one pot to fill many pots. And so I made my pledge for $20. And that week as I prayed and I says, God, now what am I going to do? God put another creative idea in my mind. My next door neighbor, this is in the 60s, right? My next door neighbor was a Sri Lankan family from Sri Lanka. The Fernandos. And the Fernandos had a huge yard, front and back. And as most Sri Lankans, if you have a house with a garden, they love plants, they love gardens. That's where I knew, that's where I learned this tree was called the umbrella tree with dong dong fruit. <laughs> What well, dong dong they called it, right? And only yesterday we were having some curry 
And, and, and they said some side vegetables come, and they said, what does the vegetable, what's a side vegetable? And he said something to Pastor Deshaun and Sri Singhalese, and he told me, well, here they call it the umbrella tree. And they mentioned the fruit, and I said, I think I know what that fruit is. Is it the one that has little spikes coming out of it, you know? And yes. And sure enough, when I ate it, it was. Because they probably brought that fruit from Sri Lanka and grew it in their garden in Singapore. So they had a gardener who had just quit. Or now, many years later, as I look back, probably God caused him to quit. <laughs> and they had no gardener. They were paying him $20 a month. So I went to my Sri Lankan neighbors and I said, Look, I will sweep your garden for you every afternoon after I finish doing my toilet job. I will come over here and sweep your garden every afternoon if you will pay me $10 a month. Well, they had been paying 20. Now I'm going to do it for 10. So they said, sure, you're hired. I think I was the only white boy in Singapore who was a gardener. Every day, sweeping the garden for this Sri Lankan family. And I paid my pledge every month. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm saying this for a reason that I've continued and continued. And as God has spoken, increased and increased. Until this day, I can say to you that I've always been able to pay what God told me to pledge. Why? Because I didn't make a pledge according to my circumstances. I made a pledge according to what God determined I could do. You see, when you do what God determines what you can do, whether my mother canceled my toilet job or whether the neighbor decided they didn't want me sweeping anymore, didn't matter because my pledge was not based on that circumstance. It was based on what God was asking me to do. God determines what you can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the third point, I just have three simple points here this morning from this story. And the third point I want you to understand is that God determines what you can do. What you can do is here. God says, I know you can do this because in my plan for tomorrow, I'm going to ensure that I will bring blessing that enables you to do this. God says, you can do this. But the third point as I look at this story is that it is you who will finally determine what you will do. Not what you can do, but what you will do. You determine what you will do. And many times what we end up determining that we will do falls short of what God determined we could do. Because we don't want to rise up in faith according to what God has spoken to our heart. As we look at this story, to me, it's a great miracle, but at the same time, it's a sad story. Because I see a story in which God determined what that lady would live on and have the rest of her life, which was here, and in the end, she only had this much to live on the rest of her life. Because she looked at her circumstances and made a decision what she would do based on what she determined instead of what God had determined. Yes, this miracle is here. Yes, the oil was poured out. But if you read carefully, when Elisha told her, you go out and borrow many pots. In fact, he said, not a few. He, the way he did, it's written in the Hebrew is a very strong contra negative to get a point across get as many 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 as you can that's basically what he was saying and the lady did she, she didn't know God was going to fill them with with oil Elijah had not told her she was going to pour oil in these pots she had no idea why she was gathering pots you see God never tells you the whole plan when God told me to make the pledge for $10, he didn't tell me about cleaning the toilet. 
It was only after I had made that decision. When God told me to make the $20 pledge, he didn't tell me about the neighbor's garden that needed to be swept. It was only after that I realized they had no garden as I was praying, God spoke and gave me that idea. God never tells you the whole plan because he says we must operate by faith. Are you hearing me? Faith. If you can do it on your own, then it's not faith. Anything you can do by yourself is never faith. Faith has to be something that you require God to step in the picture. You require dependency on God to bring to pass what God has declared. So this lady didn't know the whole plan. And she did not listen carefully to what the prophet said. The prophet said, you go out and borrow as many, 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 many pots as you can. As we read the rest of the story, we discover she sent her sons out to borrow pots, not her. She had no idea how many pots had been gathered. And so when she was filling them and filled the last pot, she didn't know it was the last pot because she wasn't the one who had gone out and got all the pots. And as she filled it, she assumed her sons had gotten more pots because she knew what God had said. She knew what God had determined and she assumed there were more pots and she said, get me another pot. And her son said, there are no more pots. And as it filled up that pot, the Bible says the oil stopped. God had determined (laughs) for her to have this. God determined, as I've studied that scripture and prayed, I realized God determined not just to pay off her debt, not just to have just enough money to live on the rest of her life. That's not the kind of God we serve. He determined that she would live in abundance the rest of her life. That's what God had determined for her to do. But she made the decision to not listen totally to what God had asked. And she did this. And instead of living in abundance, the rest of her life she just had enough to live on all the time. Are you hearing me? Bring me another pot. She didn't know there were no more pots. She had not done what the prophet said. And the oil stopped. Because though God plans for this, God determines what you can do here. If you decide, if you determine, no, I'm only going to come here, then that's where God comes down to. That's where God will meet you. That's where God will supernaturally supply. And what God had intended to happen will not take place. Are you hearing me? Because you determine what you will do. I want you to know this morning that the God we serve is the God that says that what he desires to do in and through you in your personal life, as well as in your serving him, as well as even in your mission's commitment, what he desires to do is abundantly above All that you could ask or think. Are you hearing me? Abundantly. Above all that you could ask or think. Can you say amen? You know, many years ago, as we continued to give to missions, faith pledge, continuing to renew. And it's not just about, please remember, it's not just about a card. It's not just about increasing a pledge. It's not just about putting money into a bag for missions. It's souls, souls, souls. That's how we've sent teams across to the nations of the world. That's how we planted churches everywhere. Through the faith giving of people that did what God told them to do. Are you hearing me? At one point, 
I was increasing the pledge from 100, 200, 500, 800, 1,000. And then God spoke to my heart and said, I don't want you to give amounts. I want you to give in percentage. Percentage. I want, to give, I want you to give half your salary. Oh, okay, Lord. Then increase it to 55. Then 60. 70. <laughs> then 80. At a certain point, he spoke to my heart and said, increase it to 85. That's, of course, after paying tithe on my income, the balance, 85%. And at that point, the balance money that I had, that balance 15% after paying tithes, was what I gave my wife to buy food, provisions for the home. Every week, Tuesday, okay, here's the money for this week. I was sitting in church that Sunday. This is many years ago in the 80s. And God spoke to me and said, I want you to increase your pledge. Really, Lord? I mean, I've increased it to all that's possible. The only thing now left is what I give my wife to get food. And he says, I want you to pledge 100% of the funds after tithes, 100% to missions. All the 15%, yes. Okay. I said, you know, my wife isn't going to like this. <laughs> she's going to be a little nervous. This is many years ago. Now she's got lots of faith. Back then she didn't have as much faith. <laughs> and so I said, okay, God. So I pledged everything. Nobody knew Nobody knew what I had done. I didn't tell anyone, and I didn't tell my wife for sure. On Tuesday morning, she came to me and said, Rick, uh, do you have the money for me to go grocery shopping? So I said, let's sit down a minute. Come, come, sit down. I want to talk to you about something. She sat down, I sat down, and I said, I don't have any money because God told me to pledge all of it to missions. And I said, but let's pray. If God told me to do that, God has to supply our need. So we joined hands and we prayed and said, God, you have to supply our need. The next morning, my wife got a phone call from a lady in the church who called her and said, Sister Diane, could you drive down to Orchard Road? To, in those days, cold storage, there was a big supermarket down there. Could you drive down there or somewhere downtown and, and meet me? And uh, I have some things for you. So my wife drove down, and when she came home, she had two boxes of groceries, food. Now, in those days in Singapore, the cheapest meat you could buy was ground beef, minced meat. That was the cheapest. Chicken cost more. Minced meat was the cheapest. So I had bought my wife a book, 101 Ways to Cook Ground Beef. <laughs> because we live simply. We gave all our money to missions. And so she cooked lots of different things using ground beef. <laughs> it was the cheapest that we could buy. When she came home that day with these boxes of groceries, there were steaks inside that box, if you know what steaks are. Roasts. There was, you know, prawn. There was fish. I never liked fish. And there was fish. And I said, oh, okay, I don't really like fish. But when she cooked the fish, I found out I did like fish. I just didn't know when I grew up, my parents, the only fish they bought was the cheapest fish in the market, which was shark meat. Sand shark. They call it swahe. And that's the fish I had eaten growing up. And then I, when I got the real fish... <laughs> I said, oh, yes, I like this fish. We made milk with powdered milk, right, for our kids, for our family, because fresh milk was absorbent. So we made powdered milk, stir it up to make your milk. I grew up on that. I love fresh milk, but it was just too expensive. The next day, another lady called her, and she went down to meet that lady, and she came back with bottles of fresh milk and different kinds of breads and other groceries. Are you hearing me? And that continued every week. 
where we, did you hear, remember what I said? God wants to do abundantly above all. Where we were always eating ground beef and simple things, we begin eating nice food. <laughs> Hello? Where, where according to my circumstances, my pledge would have remained here. But God said, this is what I want you to do because I know what I'm going to supply you. Are you hearing me? And had I made my pledge for the same 85%, do you know what would have happened that next week? Nothing. There would have been no phone call. And we would still be eating ground beef. <laughs> Your circumstances do not determine what you can do. That was over 20 years ago. And through the years, we've seen God do more and more and more. We've seen God do miracle after miracle after miracle. I want to say to you today, whether you're poor or whether you're rich, you can't outgive God. You cannot outgive give God. He is not a debtor to anyone. And the more you give, the more he returns and blesses over and over and over again. Hallelujah.